Hello folks, happy Sunday. It's time again for this week's car news. Give the video a thumbs up and over 70% of you are still not subscribed. So do that. Okay, so car insurance premiums have gone up 76 quid in the first two weeks of February. A couple of reasons for that. The main one being new rules on insurance companies, which mean that they, they have to charge the same price for existing customers as they do for new ones. Everyone might think that's fantastic news. In fact, it's terrible news because they've always given new customers massive discounts, which is why it's paid to shop around every year for quite a long time for things like your car insurance and your house insurance. Now, because they've done this to make insurance fairer for people, uh, yes, it stops people that are loyal with an insurance company and don't change every year. It stops them paying more. But for those that shopped around every year, they're now losing out because of this. It's costing the insurance companies millions of pounds to put this into place because of all the various systems and checks and reports they have to do on it. I speak from experience on this. And uh, the cost obviously gets passed on to the policyholder. Um, also, on car insurance, you have to think about the, the price of cars at the moment and how that's gone up, and that obviously has a bearing on these things too. So, yeah, that will only continue, I think, um, like everything at the moment is going up in cost. But this one is going up in cost due to new rules imposed by the FCA primarily. Right, folks, so this story is about how what's happening in Russia and Ukraine is affecting the motoring industry. I don't want you to think I'm making light in any way of what's actually going on in Ukraine at the moment. I feel terrible for those people. I think it's an absolute abomination. So basically, for a few days in March, they're shutting down production of A4, A5, A6 and A7 but it seems likely that there'll be more of those cuts coming. If you've got any one of those vehicles on order, obviously you could have a further delay in an industry that's obviously already ridden with production delays. Uh, Mercedes is also uh, forced to cut shifts at European plants, and Porsche suspended Macan Panamera output due to the Ukraine conflict. And as you can expect, lots of the manufacturers are no longer supplying cars to Russia. Right, so big shout out to Ben Whitehead, Ben's put a comment in my latest lease deals of the month video, which go and check it out if you haven't. It's had the lowest views of any one of those videos I've ever done, which is really weird. It's usually my biggest video every month, and um, I sort of rely on that to uh, put the lights on. So that's a bit odd. Anyway, um, I digress. Ben has left a comment saying he's spoken to 10 to 12 leasing providers in the last couple of weeks. He's trying to get himself a plug-in hybrid, and uh, he's looking for something with a fairly short lead time. And he's just sort of collated the lead times on, on a few vehicles at the moment. So Kia Sportage, these are plug-in hybrids, by the way. Kia Sportage, June, July, for delivery of one of those. Hyundai Tucson, five to six months. Toyota RAV4, six to nine months. Cupra Formentor, six months. Cupra Leon, nine months. The A3 TFSI E, 40, 45, nine months plus. Ford Cougar, four to 12 weeks. Golf GTE, nine months. Tiguan e-hybrid 245 nine months plus so really if you need a plug-in hybrid fairly quickly Kia Sportage looks like it might be a shout as does the Ford Cougar obviously all these things are subject to change and um, you never know when there's going to be a cancelled order and suddenly you've th there's one in stock somewhere so as always if you see a lease deal in stock or a really good deal do jump on it quickly because they change rapidly Okay, on to this one. National Highways urges drivers to use the two-second rule in new campaign. So uh, eight in ten people questioned National Highways poll said they were aware of the two-second rule when they took the wheel. Two-second rule being the amount of time you should leave between you and the car in front as stopping distance. And uh, they did a little trial on the M1 and uh, they said there were 60,000 incidents of vehicles driving too close in just one year. If you regularly use the motorways, which I do, not so much as I used to, but I've done hundreds of thousands of motorway miles in the UK, tailgating's a massive issue, as are middle lane hoggers. You know, learn to use the lanes, people, for God's sake. But tailgating is a massive issue, and do think about that. Two seconds stopping time at 70 miles an hour is 96 metres. It's quite a long way. Right, the Kia EV6 has won European Car of the Year in Geneva. It's um, it's what would have normally been the Geneva Motor Show, but that's still not happening because of, of COVID. 
Second was the Renault Megane E-Tech Electric. Third, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, which obviously is very closely related to the EV6. Fourth was the Peugeot 308. Fifth was the Skoda Enyaq. Sixth was the Mustang Mach-E. And seven was the Cupra Born. The only one of those that's not really on my radar is the Peugeot 308. But in fairness, I'd be quite happy to have any of the others. Right, from Fleet News, call for speed cameras to check tax, insurance and MOT. The overwhelming majority of UK motorists support the use of safety camera technology to check for insurance, MOT and road tax offences, claims IAM RoadSmart. Research conducted by the Road Safety Charity for its annual safety culture report revealed that almost 9 in 10, 89% of motorists, support the idea of safety cameras being used to spot those who flout the rules. Uh, it's all a bit big brother, isn't it? But personally... I don't mind if people get caught for not having insurance and MOT uh, because MOT is there to make sure that the cars on the road are safe and they're going to stop when they should and that sort of stuff and everyone should have insurance. Road tax, I always pay mine, always have, but personally I don't care if people are not paying that, but that's just me. Check this out, the Vauxhall Manta's coming back in 2025 as an electric car. Anyone anyone else here watching this old enough to remember the Manta? It was sort of a, a bit of a fantasy car when I was about seven. But there you go, it's coming back. Quite a cool design. They've made it look sort of old school muscle car. Obviously some futuristic little touches to it. I'm actually not massively in love with this design from what I'm seeing here at the moment, but you never know, it might grow on me. Interesting though, I like to see these old brands coming back. I think it's, I think it's quite cool. Okay, so the Fisker Ocean EV has made its European debut in Barcelona. And as you can see, it's a very sort of futuristic looking little SUV. Solar panels on the roof there. In the center, it's got this huge screen. I think it's a 17 inch tablet style screen. And you press a button and that will actually turn. So you can have it that way if you're stopped somewhere and you're watching some Netflix, possibly while the car's being charged. Press a button and it flips back round. You can just have it to suit your particular preference. Uh, it looks like quite a cool little thing. I uh, don't know if you remember the Fisker Karma, which was this. And I think Fisker went bust at the time. Anyway, they're back and um, be interested to see how that develops, I guess. Kia is going to launch two electric pickup trucks by 2027 when it'll have 14 EVs. So it, and once again, you know, everyone's going EV, aren't they? Whether you like them or not, it's happening. And check that out. That's the that's the Kia EV9 concept with the doors open. I'm sure their production vehicle will look absolutely nothing like that. But there you go, little EV pickup truck. I think that's quite cool. I don't mind that at all. I'm not sure how many of them they'll sell in this country, but I guess that will be aimed at US primarily. Right, MG4. So this is going to be limited details on this at the moment from what I can find, but uh, this will be kind of their rival to the VW ID3. So a little EV hatchback, basically. It suggests on here pricing is going to be around €30,000. This site, by the way, is top electric SUV. Uh, so yeah, pricing they're saying is going to be about €30,000. And um, yeah, be interested to see how that develops. MG have done really well, haven't they? They've proved to be very popular and they're putting out fairly good value for money cars that seem to be reasonably well screwed together. There'll also be similar vehicles probably coming out from, from Fiat and Alfa Romeo. They're all part of the same Stellantis group. Vauxhall are in it and one or two others. Uh, they're also saying there might be an, a, an electric Jeep Wrangler coming out at some stage. Now, interestingly, this new Stellantis platform, there are going to be a few different flavours of it, but they're suggesting that the small one will start at 300 miles of range and the largest one will go up to 500 miles of range. 500 miles of range really changes the conversation around EVs a little bit, doesn't it, really? Thanks for watching, guys. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you haven't already done so, and don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to play you a little ad now. Please watch it, because I really need some support with the channel, and uh, if you like it and you support it, it does help the channel. See you again soon. I recently got this amazing watch from AV8 Watches. They make stylish aviation-themed watches. You can see this one's the Spitfire, and it's the automatic watch. See the movement there is actually a Spitfire. These are phenomenal watches that are really, really well made. And uh, I love this one so much. AV8 have given me a discount code for you guys. 
So please click on the link in the video description. You can use the code GYM15 to get 15% off any non-sale items on their site. The watches range from just over 100 quid up to about 350 quid. This is a fully automatic watch, so don't have to wind it or put batteries in it. And uh, it's an absolute joy. I've had some nice watches over the years and this one's up there with them, even though it's not a household name as yet. I really love that aviation style design for a watch and there are plenty to choose from on their website. This is just one, there are loads of different options there for you. Go and check it out and help support the channel. Thanks.